So, today we start our lectures with differentiability of functions defined on real line. So, differentiability So, here the setup is as follows. Suppose I stands for an open interval of the form a b and let us say f is a function defined on i taking values on the real line. Let us also suppose x naught is a point in i. We want to define what do we mean by saying that f is differentiable at the point x naught. The definition goes as follows. f is said to be differentiable in short I will write diff at x naught if the following limit exists that is limit x going to x naught f of x minus f of x naught divided by x minus x naught exists finitely. This definition can also be written in a different fashion. I will just put it as a remark that the above definition is equivalent to limit h going to 0 f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h. Okay. Now, what does this definition actually mean? For this, we need to draw the following picture. Let us assume that the function is represented by a curve of this form. Okay. Let us say this is the point x naught. Now, x naught plus h should be somewhere here. This is x naught plus h. The corresponding values we will denote certainly by f of x naught and then this is f of x naught plus h. Now, if I look at the quotient f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h, it just means that I look at this line which join those two points, it is the slope of the line joining x naught f x naught and x naught plus h f of x naught plus h. When we take the limit h going to 0 in the limit, in the limit then we get the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x naught f x naught. This is the geometric interpretation of the derivative of a function at a point. Now, it might happen then once we know the geometric interpretation that all such curves they may not have a well defined tangent. Analytically it would mean that there are some functions which are not differentiable at certain points. So, let us look at an example first. 
So, our first example is a very typical one of a function which is not differentiable at a point. We look at the function f x equals to mod x. for all x in R. Now, we can easily draw the graph of this function, what it looks like. It is very simple function. This is the y axis, then I have the x axis, this is the origin 0, then the graph of the function is this and this. Okay? And we see that at the point 0, the function has a sharp edge. As such, it would mean then that the function possibly do not have a well defined tangent there. That means, our definition of differentiability should fail for the function at the point 0. Let us check why it is so. So, I look at the limit, limit h going to 0, f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h and then I put the value of the function, it then would mean limit h going to 0 modulus of h, of course, f of 0 is 0 divided by h. Now, if I look at the limit h going to 0 plus, by now it means that h approaches 0 from the right hand side. This then is by the definition of modulus, it is h by h which is equals to 1. But now, if I look at limit h going to 0 minus, that is, I am approaching 0 from the negative side. Again, by the definition of modulus, I have minus h because my h is negative, but modulus of h has to be positive. So, I multiply it with a minus divided by h. The answer I get is minus 1. They do not match. This implies that f is not differentiable at x equal to 0. Although it is an easy exercise to check that f is differentiable at all other points. So, the net conclusion is that f is differentiable on r minus 0. So, you see that whenever the function has come with a sharp edge, the differentiability fails there. Nevertheless, differentiability is a stronger property than something which we already know, namely continuity of the function. And that is the first result we are trying to prove now. That is, we will try to prove that if a function is differentiable at a point, then the function has to be continuous there. So, that is our next theorem. So, let f be from an open interval i to r and x naught is a point in i. If f is differentiable at x naught, then f is continuous. at x naught. So, the proof of this is very simple. We know by definition of continuity, we need to prove, we need to prove that limit x going to x naught f x must be equals to f of x naught. So, what we do is we write f x equals to f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught and then multiply it with x minus x naught. So, the net result is f x minus f x naught, then I cancel f x naught by adding it with it. So, this is the expression and now I take the limit. So, this implies that limit x going to x naught f of x is certainly equals to limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught 
divided by x minus x naught into x minus x naught plus limit x going to x naught f x naught. Notice that I have divided this expression of limit on the right hand side simply because of one thing. I know that f x minus f x naught by x minus x naught that is this quantity it has a well defined limit as f is differentiable as x goes to x naught this quantity also has a well defined limit. So, the product limit exists on the right hand side I have a constant function whose limit as x goes to x naught also exists. So, I can write it in this form then the next line is very obvious I will just write it as limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught into limit x going to x naught x minus x naught plus the last limit limit x going to x naught f x naught. And then it is very easy to see what is the end result. So, end result is f prime at x naught because f is differentiable at x naught this is where I am using the fact that f is differentiable otherwise this limit may not exist. So, this into the second quantity is 0 plus f of x naught the net result is f of x naught this is precisely what we wanted to prove this implies f is continuous at x naught. Now, aimed with armed with this we want to do some calculus of derivatives that is the familiar rule because derivative after all is an operation on functions. So, there are certain things which you will like to know and we will write it as a theorem. Assume that f and g are differentiable functions. then number 1 f plus g this is also differentiable at x naught and it is given by f prime at x naught plus g prime at x naught. Second is about the point wise product of functions that is f dot g prime at x naught this is f prime x naught times g x naught plus f x naught times g prime x naught. Here the meaning of the function f dot g is the point wise product that is f dot g at x is defined to be f of x times g of x the right hand side certainly makes sense because f x and g x are two real numbers. So, I can multiply them. The third property is about quotient that if g is non-zero at x naught then f by g prime at x naught is g x naught square times f prime x naught into g x naught minus f x naught times g prime x naught. Well, for this actually what I need is it is the function g which I have written here the precise statement should be it is non-zero in a neighborhood of x naught. Okay. Now, the first one number 1 is fairly simple that you just write down the definition of the derivative for the function f plus g and separate things it follows easily. Only 2 requires bit of our attention. So, we will start with 
proving 2. So, the given function is I call it hx. equals to fx into gx. And then I want to look at limit x going to x naught, hx minus hx naught divided by x minus x naught. And then I write down the definition of h that is limit x going to x naught fx into gx minus fx naught into gx naught divided by x minus x naught. Then what I do is I write it as limit x going to x naught. I write it as fx gx minus fx naught gx plus fx naught gx minus fx naught gx naught and I divide the whole thing by x minus x naught, simple. Notice that the middle terms cancel each other, that is this term and this term. It has been arranged in such a fashion that they cancel each other. Now, if I separate terms, what I get is this, limit x going to x naught, fx minus fx naught divided by x minus x naught into gx plus gx minus gx naught divided by x minus x naught into f x naught. Just by separating the terms. Now, notice the first factor. Limit x going to x naught f x minus x f x naught by x minus x naught that is certainly f prime x naught. But the added term g x which you have as x goes to x naught, we know that it goes to g x naught because g is continuous at x naught. So, the end result then is if I separate the limit as limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught into limit x going to x naught g x plus limit x going to x naught g x minus g x naught divided by x minus x naught times limit x going to x naught f x naught. If I just put all the required values, what I will get is f prime x naught because f is differentiable at x naught times g x naught because g is continuous at x naught because it is differentiable at x naught plus f x naught times g prime x naught. So, this is the formula of the product which you already know perhaps. Now, for 3 what I observe is it is enough to calculate, enough to calculate the derivative of the function capital G x equals to 1 by G x at x naught. Notice that my assumption on little g is that g is non-zero in a neighborhood of x naught. If I do not have this, this capital function g is not at all well defined. Now, once I find the derivative of capital G, then it is easy to see that using 2, you can actually get 3. So, first let us try to prove that what is the derivative of g at x naught. 
So we again start with the definition. G prime at x naught by definition is limit x going to x naught g x minus g x naught divided by x minus x naught which then I write as limit x going to x naught 1 by x minus x naught into 1 by g x minus 1 by g x naught which then is limit x going to x naught 1 by x minus x naught into g x naught minus g x divided by g x into g x naught which can now be written as limit x going to x naught g x minus g x naught divided by x minus x naught into minus 1 by g x into g x naught. Now, if I take the limit, as I know, since little g is differentiable at x naught, it is continuous. So, limit x going to x naught g x is actually g x naught. So, limit x going to x naught 1 by g x is 1 by g x naught. So, if I use this, what I get is that the limit is g prime x naught times minus 1 by g x naught square, which we write as minus g prime x naught by g x naught square. Apply this. with 2 to probe 3. So, these are the familiar rules of derivative which we anyway know. Now, we want to understand the geometry of the curve f through the derivatives. See, the whole point is that if I have a function f defined which is differentiable, it is not necessary that the function is given as a curve, okay. But if it was a curve, then certain of its properties will be obvious, which we want to derive from the differentiability of the function. So, the first thing of, it, of its kind is goes as follows. Now, another fundamental property of differentiability of functions, which we need for applications is the chain rule. So, this is what I am going to talk now chain rule is actually about differentiability of compositions of functions. For example, we have a situation like this. I have a function f defined from i, let us say to another open interval j, where i and j are open intervals. Let us say I have another function g defined from j to r. Then it makes sense to talk about the composite function g compose f, we write it in this form, which is defined from i to r the following way. The definition is g compose f at x is g of f x. See, it makes sense because f x lies in j where g is defined. So, f x actually belongs to the domain of g. So, I can apply g on that. Now, suppose the condition is this, that if f is differentiable at x naught and g is differentiable at f x naught. Then the new function which we have formed g compose f 
this is differentiable at x naught. Not only that, we can calculate the derivative also and the derivative g compose f prime at x naught is g prime at f x naught times f prime at x naught. This is the familiar chain rule. Now, let us look at an example first before proving the result. Suppose I look at this function f x equals to sin of x square. Then many of you know that it is true that f prime at x is actually cosine of x square times twice x. How does it follow? It follows actually from chain rule the following way. Just take g x to be equal to sin x, h x to be equals to x square, apply chain rule. How? Because g compose h prime at x, this is g prime at f x, sorry, at h x times h prime x. Now, I know what is g prime. If g x equals to sin x, g prime is cosine x, which we will derive after some time. So, it is cosine of h x anyway is x square times h prime x is twice x. We get the formula. So, this is a technical tool which we will be needing, but it requires a proof which we are going to supply right now. <coughs> so, proof goes as follows. I first define a function, define h of y to be equals to g of y minus g of f x naught by y minus f x naught. If y is not equals to f x naught. See, if y is equals to f x naught, we will have problem of having 0 in the denominator, which we want to avoid. Then how do we fun define the function h for all y? Suppose y is equals to f x naught, we define it as g prime at f x naught, which we know exists. So, this defines a function h on the whole real line. When I say h is continuous at f x naught as limit y going to f x naught, h of y is same as limit y going to f x naught. g of y minus g of f x naught divided by y minus f x naught. This by definition of derivative of g at f x naught is g prime at f x naught, which by our definition is h of f x naught. Now, this then implies that y minus f x naught times h of y is equals to g y minus 
g of f x naught. This implies then if I put y equals to f x for an arbitrary x, I get that f x minus f x naught times h of f x equals to g of f x minus g of f x naught. If I now divide both sides y x minus x naught, what I get is g of f x minus g of f x naught divided by x minus x naught equals to f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught times h of f x. Now, I am in a perfect condition to take the limit as x goes to x naught. Let us see what happens. So, limit x going to x naught g of f x minus g of f x naught divided by x minus x naught is equals to limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught into h of f x, which again I can write as limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught into limit x going to x naught h of f x. Now, the first quantity is nothing but f prime at x naught by definition as f is differentiable at x naught. What about the second quantity? Well, I have proved that h is a continuous function. So, as x goes to x naught, since f is also a continuous function at x naught, I have that the second limit is actually h of f x naught. Now, I can go back to the definition of h. What is h of f x naught? By my definition, it is g prime at f x naught. So, what I get is f prime at x naught times g prime at f x naught. Notice the left hand side. What is the left hand side? Well, the left hand side here, if you just apply the definition of composition, it is limit x going to x naught g compose f at x minus g compose f at x naught divided by x minus x naught, which is same as g compose f whole prime at x naught. This is precisely what we wanted to prove. This is called the chain rule of the derivatives. Next, we turn towards certain properties which are related to the geometry of curves. So, first I define if a function f from i to r is given, let us say x naught is a point in i, then x naught is called a local maxima if there exists a delta bigger than 0 such that for all x in x naught minus delta 
x naught plus delta we have f x is less than or equal to f of x naught that is x naught is called a local maximum if there exists a region around x naught such that for all x in that region f x naught is the highest is the largest one all the other values are less than x naught f of x naught so if i draw the graph of the function if it is possible let us say this is my i suppose x naught is here then i have a delta such that these two points are x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta there the graph of the function looks something like this that is x naught is the highest point okay this is what local maximum means now suppose the picture is like this only so i will again draw a replica of this picture this is x naught this is x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta the graph of the function as i said looks like this if this is the case then you see that at the point f of x naught this is the point f of x naught if i draw the tangent at this point it will look exactly like this that is this is the tangent we have that the tangent there is actually parallel to the x axis what does this mean in terms of the derivative because the derivative f prime at x not if it exists it tells you the slope of the tangent at the point f x not if it is parallel to x axis that means the slope is zero that is this implies that f of is zero fine now to conclude this do i really need to know how the graph of the function there looks like because the function might be so complicated that i cannot draw the graph of the function nevertheless the conclusion that makes sense we can examine whether it is true so that is the next result so the theorem is this let f is from i to r x not belonging to i is a local maximum of f that is given to me which was the previous situation also if if f is differentiable at x not then f prime at x not is equal to 0 once i prove this theorem it will show at least one thing that to draw the conclusion that at the local maximum the tangent is parallel to the x axis for that i don't need to draw the curve of the function without drawing the graph i can conclude the same that is the power of having the formal definition of derivative so let us start with the proof of this how do we go about it well i know that f prime at x not exist that is in the supposition then there are two things which can happen either f prime at x not is positive or it is negative if none of these things are true then the only possibility remains is f prime at x not is zero so what we try to do is let's assume 
that f prime at x naught is positive and try to understand what it means. Now, assume that f prime at x naught strictly bigger than 0. This then implies by your definition that limit x going to x naught f of x minus f of x naught divided by x minus x naught. This limit exists and is strictly bigger than 0. Now, while dealing with continuity, we have noticed one thing which you are going to use now that if I have a function whose limit at a point x naught is strictly bigger than 0, then there exists a neighborhood of that point x naught where the function is strictly bigger than 0. That is the observation I am going to use now. So, this would imply then that there exists delta bigger than 0 such that this whole interval x naught minus delta x naught plus delta is contained in i and for all x in x naught minus delta x naught plus delta we have f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught is strictly bigger than 0. Now, suppose I choose x strictly bigger than x naught in x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta. That is in this interval, I choose a point x which is on the right hand side of x naught. Then look at the quantity here. I say the denominator x minus x naught is positive. This is positive. And the whole quantity is positive. That means the numerator also has to be positive. That is, it then implies that f x minus f x naught is strictly bigger than 0. Now, I could have chosen the delta to be the delta 1 which satisfies the local maximum property. To be precise, there exists delta 1 such that f x is less than f x naught for all x in x naught minus delta 1, x naught plus delta 1. Let us choose delta 2 to be equals to minimum of delta and delta 1. Then I have that for all x in x naught minus delta 2, x naught plus delta 2, I have two conditions. Number 1, f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught strictly bigger than 0. Number 2, f x is less than f x naught. Now, choose x as in the previous case in x naught minus delta 2, x naught plus delta 2 such that x is bigger than x naught. Then 1 tells me 
from 1 we have f x minus f x naught is strictly bigger than 0 which implies f x is bigger than f x naught which certainly contradicts it contradicts 2 because I know f x has to be less than f x naught. Why did this contradiction occur? Because I have assumed that f x minus f x naught by x minus x naught the limit is strictly bigger than 0. This cannot happen. Then the other possibility is f x minus f x naught by x minus x naught the limit is less than 0. Let us examine that case now. Assume that limit x going to x naught f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught it is less than 0. As in the previous case I can say that there exist delta bigger than 0 such that for all x in x naught minus delta, x naught plus delta, I have two condition. Number one, f x minus f x naught divided by x minus x naught is less than 0 and f x is less than f x naught. Now choose x in the set x naught minus delta x naught plus delta such that x is less than x naught. Then the denominator here is negative. but the whole quantity is positive that means the numerator is positive. So, this implies y 1 that f x minus f x naught is strictly bigger than 0 that is f x is bigger than f x naught which certainly again contradicts 2. That is if I assume that the derivative of f at x naught is bigger than 0 then there is a problem. If I assume that the derivative of the function f at x naught is less than 0 then also there is a problem. So, the only possible way out is the conclusion which I want that is f prime at x naught is actually equal to 0. Now the question is in this whole argument what is so holy about the local maximum? I could have defined local minimum also analogously. So I define if f is from i to r, i is an open interval as always, x naught belongs to i then x naught is called a local minimum if there exist delta bigger than 0 such that x naught minus delta x naught plus delta is contained in i and for all x in x naught minus delta x naught plus delta we have f x to be bigger than or equal to f of x naught. That is there exists a neighborhood of the point x naught such that the value f x naught is the smallest among all the f x's. Okay? And then I will like to show that this is also true. 
if f is from i to r and x naught is a local minima of f and f prime at x naught exist, then f prime at x naught is 0. Well, this proof follows very easily. Proof is just one line. Define g x equal to minus f x. Notice that this implies that x naught is a local maximum of g. By the previous theorem, it would imply that g prime at x naught is 0, which would imply that minus f prime at x naught is 0, which certainly implies that f prime at x naught is 0. Fine, but we will like to notice certain things here. The condition, the first one is the as follows. I will put it as a remark. Look at the function f x equals to mod x. Then 0 is a minimum. x equal to 0 is a minimum and hence a local minimum. But f prime 0 equal to 0 does not make sense. This is simply because the function is not differentiable there. That is the condition that f prime x not exist is very fundamental. Second one is the converse of the result is certainly not true. That is, if I have a function f whose derivative vanishes at a point, let us say x naught, then that point has to be either a local maximum or a local minimum. That is not true. I look at the function f x equals to x cube, where x belongs to the open interval minus 1, 1 which I call i. Then notice that f prime at x is 3 x square, which implies f prime at 0 is certainly 0. That is derivative of the function at the point 0 vanishes. If I look at the graph of the function, it looks like this. the point 0, x equal to 0 is not a local max or a local min. That is, the converse of the result that if f is differentiable at x naught, and the derivative vanishes at the local maximum or the local minimum, the converse of this result is not true. From the zeros of the derivative, you cannot conclude that the point is a local extremum of the function. But the observation that if f is differentiable at the local maximum or local minimum, then the derivative is 0, this has profound application. 